All right, so we're down below here, and this is uh, Jonathan at the nav station, and I got John Hoskins over here, who is the uh, can't quite see him in the in the light, but John's the uh, boat is navigator it? for Bodacious Four, and uh, Jonathan is is uh, taking a little while for this to get focused in there, dog on it. Feel more light. It's probably because of the lighting. There you go. Make sure that'll help. It's not doing it. There it comes in. So, anyways, that's a. So, Jonathan, there is the uh, the IT specialist on board. Show me what these instruments are, there, John. You can kind of. So we have the ICOM um, VFH uh, marine radio, which basically to communicate with other boats, to communicate with the race committee, and in the. In the event that we have a distress situation, we can use that to communicate with the Coast Guard. And this particular unit is integrated with our GPS, so it actually has the ability to broadcast through um, the DSC network the position of the boat every um, six seconds to the Coast Guard and to other boats around us who may be aware of the communication broadcast that happens over the VHF network. So that's cool. So that, that red button in the upper right hand corner of it, you push that if you're getting a distress situation, it sends out an emergency signal, huh? So you flip that little cover up and then there's a button underneath of it that's protected to prevent inadvertently sending the distress signal. And once that's been depressed, it starts the process to notify the authorities if they're within range of the boat's um, state. And one of the things it also does is you can specify what the distress is by it'll present a list of different um, standard distress um, disorders and then you select the one that you want and it'll begin to broadcast that state that the boat's in. It That's knows cool. things like what the boat name is, um, it knows the length of the boat, it knows the direction the boat was last going, at what speed, and it knows the, the last position that the boat was in when it broadcasts that particular information. That's cool. And so then above it is what? Uh, That's a radio on board, and we use that for, for both entertainment and also um, so that if we want to watch any kind of um, videos that we receive from offshore, um, when we're offshore from onshore, we can hear the audio from the videos off the computer because it's yeah. integrated with the computer as well. Oh, well, that's pretty interesting. The next one over is the system that allows us to um, monitor the state of our lithium ion battery system. And on our boat, we actually have a unique battery system. The lithium ion batteries are more efficient than lead acid batteries, which are traditional in the car and the boat, um, which allow us a much longer run time. But it also means a much shorter recharge time, which means we need less fuel because we can recharge those batteries um, at a faster rate than what a traditional lead acid battery will do. So that helps us in terms of weight on the boat and also um, being able to run a lot more equipment than maybe what other boats might have on board. So that lithium ion is pretty state of the art. That's it's the same thing that runs your cordless drill at home and some of the things like that, but just in a much bigger scale, huh? Correct. Your laptop ah. battery or your portable electronics batteries are all typically lithium ion nowadays. Well, that's interesting. And then next to that, you've got uh, so some BNG instruments there, huh? Correct. So the BNG are for um, all of our dynamics related to the boat instruments as far as wind and compass headings and um, speed of the boat. So the top one is actually the autopilot or what we call a hydropilot and it allows us to put on a, um, a piece of equipment that will steer the boat for us automatically as opposed to having to have somebody at the helm at all times to keep most, the boat. Most people have heard me talk about auto on board Bordacious Dream which is what I named the autopilot. Correct. And that's the uh, brains to it all right there. Huh? Correct. So this actually ties to another box that's in the back of the boat and that box sends signals to a hydraulic ram that moves back and forth linearly and it's attached um, to the um, the rudder, the helm. The quadrant the, stuff the quadrant. in the helm that drives the boat, steers the boat. Correct. Mm -hmm. So that allows it to um, correct the boat's um, direction based on either um, wind and percentage of wind angles if you set that up or by a fixed compass heading and telling it that's the direction you want it to sail the boat. And as the boat um, veers course from the wind and the waves, it will keep trying to correct itself and put it back on course. And then down below it is the uh, Hercules is 2000 system, which gives you the, all the wind information, speed information, and things of that nature, huh? Correct. So depending on what we have dialed up on the um, wind display, we can determine 
like right now this is the true wind speed outside the boat, it's 2.3 knots, and this is the tr direction uh, magnetic that the wind is coming from. Very cool. And then um, so, if, if we're in night vision, then we can turn night vision on and then all the instruments will light up and it's hard to tell here, but they're in red instead of go. in white, yeah. which is important because when you're on a sailboat, at night, you want to minimize white light um, distracts your ability to see variations in the light intensity. So by using red light, your um, eyes are able to adjust very rapidly between no light and, and low light conditions. So that's why uh, when we're on deck sailing the boat at night, we have very little light on deck so that our night vision doesn't get disrupted and stuff. Correct. So then next to that, you got a big TV screen type thing there, huh? So this um, unit is our plotter. And the plotter is important for us because when we go in and out of harbors and we go in areas where there could be obstacles that we would not want to run into, then we want to have the ability to see them on the chart. And we also want the ability to be alerted to um, possible freighters or you know, a, a ship that might potentially cause us a hazard for um, collision. And so this particular system is integrated with AIS, which is the Automatic Information System, and it allows our boat to broadcast our direction and speed and calculate whether there's an opportunity for collision between our boat and the other boat. And because it can determine, it's a nice little mathematical type equation where it, it knows the speed and direction the other boat's going, and it can determine whether the possibility of those two boats will actually collide or not. Even though it may appear like they're going to hit each other, it knows that the other boat's actually going so much faster that we'll miss each other. I know that was a real big event. It helped to me go out crossing the Atlantic because the, I would know what boat was out there. I know what the name of the boat was and all the information about it. I could call it on the radio if I wanted to. So it looks like right there, that's a picture of the harbor where we're at right now, huh? Correct. So what and I that's did is where we're indicated on there in a GPS signal. Um, so we're the little crosshair little right crosshair there. Crosshair right there, okay. Right. And um, it, this is nice because it actually shows depths within the area where we are, so we can kind of be aware of areas that might be too shallow for us to go because of our draw that the boat requires for the keel, which is at the deepest point of the boat. And also kind of shows you pretty clearly where the fingers of the different piers are for possible places to dock the boat. It's pretty amazing detail. What the, what's the accuracy on these things? 50 feet or so? Uh, well, it's a lot closer than that. A lot that. closer than that. Yeah, right? um, typically, um, depending on how many satellites are locked in, uh, this unit will do about six feet. Wow. So I understand they use it sometimes in factories for, for, ma for warehousing where they've got robots and they can program a robot to go to a specific point within actually millimeters in, in height and width so it can go to a shelf and actually pull a part off a shelf and bring it back. Correct. With the same technology, huh? Very similar. Very cool. And then turning the corner here, this is uh, the main computer brain in the boat, right? Correct. This is the Argonaut computer with a daylight readable display. It's similar to what you have in your house, except this is an i7 processor. It's at 8 gigs of RAM. And one of the nice things about it, it's running Windows 7 just like your computer at home probably is, or something similar. But one of the nice things about it is it has the ability to run our charting system where the navigator behind me, John, um, will use this to collect information and determine um, the best possible route um, that the boat should take in order to get to the location quickly. So you see John reaching in there and John spends a, a majority of the time during a race sitting right here manning all this stuff, monitoring weather information that comes over to satellite, the boat's uh, speed and course and direction and how the guys are sailing it and trying to constantly determine the quickest route and the quickest fastest way the boat can sail to the finish line which is what racing is all about right john correct <laughs> <laughs> pretty much yeah all right in addition to that there are a number of um, functions that the um, computer can do for us and if we're close enough to shore one of the things that we can use is a product called weatherworks where we can get satellite weather data um, streamed to the boat real time and um, as that information is made available it allows us to know um, what wind speeds are what the wave heights are what the um, the currents are within the ocean 
So there's a good map of uh, North America right there, Jonathan. Can you point uh, the Baja Peninsula where we're all headed to? So this long strip of land coming down off of the southern part of California. You see where he's got the uh, cursor there. Is all the is, Baja uh, Peninsula. And so we'll be leaving right from, from approximately right up in here, sailing all the way down here, missing these islands, and then wrapping back around to there. Let's see what I'm at. So they can move the map around as necessary and uh, bring it around and show you a little bit closer to how it looks like. You gotta draw the box over, yeah, like there. A lot of this is still, uh, we're still working the kinks out of this stuff. So that way we can do it. So approximately right around in here, and then taking off and going all the way down to there. Gotcha. And that's Cabo San Lucas down where you had said the arrow. Yeah, went. right down in there. Can you back that out and show a whole world on there? Does it? Was it? Uh, I think it doesn't go that far yeah, out. It doesn't go that far out. No, it does it by regions. So I'd have just to, so that's I'd just North to, America. Okay. I'd have to. That's cool. So I noticed uh, Jonathan and John have been working on this for quite some time here now we've been out here a couple of weekends with these guys and even though you see just these displays on the outside here behind the walls in this boat there are all sorts of other types of little boxes black boxes magic boxes and interfaces and stuff that all make all this stuff work and talk together it's been quite a challenge to pull it all together hasn't it it has been we've been working on this for over a year there's even a printer on board so that we can print out correspondence and or weather facts data that is so the crew can review it and understand what the future weather will be that the boat will be exposed to as the race progresses. So this is a pretty pretty top shelf state of the art uh, thing wouldn't you say John? Yeah and then we have a tablet on here. Let's see if I have to connect to so we also have a, Let's just hop on that. an iPod tablet there that uh, I gotta hook onto the wireless. It it's wireless uh, so that John Hoskins, the navigator, can then take it up on deck while we're negotiating the, between what we're doing with the weather and stuff like that and pick the best route and he can be seeing what's going on up on deck. Everything that happens down, down below here on all these instruments can happen on this thing wireless up in the cockpit. It's pretty amazing. There's a, there's a good picture of all the different readouts that are available. From In the upper right hand corner there you have Latin Longitude. And then you've got, uh, well, speed over the ground is 0.0 because .0 we're at the dock right now. Course over the ground up in the upper left-hand corner. Compasses, winds, depth, below the depth transducer. And even down here, you've got the, um, the, the wind on the compass uh, angles here. So the orange here is showing the angle of the wind on us. Pretty amazing stuff. So that pretty much uh, shows you what we got for technology to navigate and race the boat. And um, they can even get, uh, John just put up the, uh, the same navigation there that you see on the big plotter right there. So it brings it right back to you and we can take that right up on deck with us. And across the top there are a number of boxes that represent that same information that you saw on the other. So there's absolutely no reason for us to ever get lost, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, a, it's quite a big change from uh, even say 40 or 50 years ago when uh, the satellite technology wasn't there but we had some uh, we had some RDF and some radio direction finding stuff and even before that the use of sextants to navigate by the stars and the sun and latitude and longitudes were very important. We still use the latitude and longitudes but uh, it's now all gotten off the GPS satellites and stuff, huh? So before um, we had very limited range of what we could get for internet and a lot of boats would use single sideband which is a very slow serial communication from where they were in the ocean back to a terrestrial or a kind of a hopping effect um, between different stations in order to get some kind of information nice. feed. And nowadays we've managed to um, progress to a satellite base so the information shoots up into the sky and hits satellites and then shoots back down to a terrestrial station and basically that becomes the relay is the satellites up in the sky. 
and we've got the older style technology, which is like the dial-up used to be in your house, which is this satellite phone that we have over back in the corner here. I don't know if you can see that or not. But there's a, a Meridium satellite phone that's in a cradle down here, and that is a method that would allow us to um, connect up to the internet um, in the event that our primary satellite connection, which is a large dome that's on the back of the boat, um, is a higher speed connection that would be similar to like DSL that you have in your house so that we have the ability to get um, internet connectivity for information for weather grip data, communicate email with our um, race committee and also maybe kind of keep people back home um, connected and understanding what, where we're at and what we're doing. And so this, this whole uh, computer screen here is all run off the internet right now, correct? correct. Or off correct. the satellite. Correct. You're, you're projecting up to the satellite and back onto it, even though we're close to shore, we're just testing the satellites right now. Correct. So this map, for example, which is a U.S. time map, I can click on that, and what it's going to do is go up through the satellite and capture information that's going to pass back down to the boat through that connection through the satellite, even though we're relatively close to shore. Hmm. Take a minute for that little thing to load. It's amazing stuff. Okay. Well, that kind of sums up what our technology capabilities are on board the boat, and these technologies are going to help us uh, uh, get videos and exciting stuff off the boat coming back from Cabo for our expedition. So, but it's also going to help these guys race the boat down to Cabo and uh, hopefully turn out a really good result. So, thanks a lot, Jonathan. Thanks, John. You're welcome. Thank you.